What is up everybody? So in yesterday's video, I talked about everything that I thought the original Battlefront 2 did better than EA's version of Battlefront 2. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over everything that I thought EA's version of Battlefront 2 has done better than the original. Now I do still think that the original game is better, uh, just based off of everything that we got for the time in 2005 with all the maps and heroes and campaign and modes and just the amount of content that you got in 2005 with the base game versus what we have now in EA's version. I still give the win to 2005, but that doesn't mean that this game doesn't have some good features to it. I think this game has come a long way since its launch, and there's some really good things that this game has that the original doesn't. And to start off that list, let's talk about the heroes. Now, the original Battlefront 2 does have a lot of heroes. There's actually a pretty wide selection of heroes, and some of those heroes aren't even in EA's version of Battlefront 2. But EA's version of Battlefront 2 does have 20 heroes, some of which came out after the fact they weren't in the game at launch, but they are here now. Since the launch, they have added Finn, Phasma, Grievous, Obi-Wan, Count Dooku, and Anakin. Now, I don't know if you count Finn and Phasma since they came out just a month later and they were kind of held back to go alongside with the release of Episode 8, but regardless, they were added to the game. Now, one thing that I do give EA's version of Battlefront 2 over the original is that every single hero feels unique from one another. Now, some of the hero balancing is a bit off and some heroes are way better than others. All of the heroes do feel unique. They all have their own individual abilities versus the original Battlefront 2, a lot of the heroes kind of use the same stuff. Now, some of the heroes did have some unique abilities like Vader could force choke, Palpatine could use lightning, for example. But for the most part, it was pretty generic. Force push, force pull, saber throw, force choke, lightning. Like, they did give choke to Palpatine, Invader, and Dooku. So it made sense based off of what they had to work with at the time. Like, they had the right characters using the right kind of abilities. Like, the ones you would think that would force push actually force pushed, and then vice versa. But they didn't feel unique. Like, a force choke was still a force choke, and a throw was still a throw. In EA's version of Battlefront 2, every single hero, for the most part, feels different. Even the ones that have similar moves. Like, Obi-Wan's push is completely different from Luke's push, and Yoda's push, and Darth Maul's choke push, and Kylo's pull is different from Anakin's pull. They all have their own unique abilities, even if they are similar abilities. Even though the balancing isn't all there, and some heroes are way better than others, there is 20 different heroes to choose from, which is a pretty wide variety, and they all have unique abilities. So I gotta give EA's Battlefront 2 credit there. And then up next on things that I think EA's Battlefront 2 has done better is the skins. Now, the original Battlefront 2 didn't really give you any option to customize your characters. It was kind of based off of class, and then every single hero just had their default skins. At least in EA Battlefront 2, some of the heroes have different skins. They have different outfits. Some of them are based off of movies. Some of them are based off of the Clone Wars TV show. Anakin has a few. Dooku has a few. Obi-Wan, Grievous, Luke, Leia, Han... The only downside is that the villains just haven't gotten any love from DICE for some reason. I don't know why EA and DICE do not want to give the villains skins, and they want to give Han seven skins, but at least some of the heroes have some options to customize the way that you look. And that's just the heroes. The droids have skins, the clones have a crap ton of skins, you can change the way that you look based off of what era you're on. So the amount of customization that they have added over the course of two years to the game is just... When you sit down and you look at all the individual skins that they have added there's actually quite a few and that is something that the original battlefront 2 just didn't give you the option to change the only way you could change the way that your character looked is if you changed your class now the classes do look different from one another in this game as well but you can also change the skins in each individual class so the customization of skins is something i really like about ea's battlefront and then next up is the classes the original Battlefront 2 came up with the idea of having different classes, which is what EA's version is kind of based off of. You have the Assault, Heavy, Officer, and the Specialist, and all those options were available in the original Battlefront 2, but I have to give it to EA's version over the original here. 
because EA's version has the star card system. I'm not the biggest fan of the star card system, but what I do like is that you can change your loadouts. So in the original Battlefront 2, let's say you picked a heavy, you were stuck with a rocket launcher, you were stuck with the same exact loadout every single time, you couldn't change your weapons, whatever class you picked was the loadout that you had. But in EA's version, if you pick a heavy, you can switch it up. You can use a grenade, you can change your sentry loadout, you can set up your class to have an ion disruptor, and you can take out vehicles, you can change your blaster. Now, the, there aren't very many weapons in EA's version of Battlefront 2, but you can at least have the option of changing your weapon. So when it comes to the individual classes and the customization options that you have to change your classes and stuff, I gotta give it to EA's version. They saw the original version from 2005, and they expanded on that which is a good thing. You can tell that they get a lot of inspiration from the original Battlefront 2, and I wish that they'd do more of that stuff in the future, because there's a reason that game was so good. So I'd love to see them keep copying more from the original going forward. And then up next is the Enforcers. Now in the original Battlefront 2, the Enforcers were kind of included with just the regular classes. For example, the Super Battle Droid was just part of the regular loadout, and same with the Droidica. But in EA's version of Battlefront 2, all of the Enforcers are their own category, they have their own abilities, and they're basically mini-heroes. So a Super Battle Droid just isn't part of your regular loadout. Same with the Droidica, and EA's version added the Clone Commandos, and the Arc Troopers, and the BX Droids, which all came from the Clone Wars, which the original Battlefront 2 couldn't have done at the time. So I do really like the addition of the Enforcers to EA's version, and I think that's a great addition to the game. And I gotta give the point to EA's version here, since the original didn't have anything like that. And then the final point I want to make about EA's version of Battlefront 2 is the vehicles. Just the amount of vehicles that are actually in this game is pretty astonishing. Now, I do like the feature that the original Battlefront 2 had where you could get in and out of vehicles however you wanted. I did like that, and I wish that EA's version of Battlefront 2 would do that as well. And you can do that with the ATTE. I want to see that implemented more in EA's version. But besides that, just the sheer amount of vehicles that they've put into this game. They have the gunship and the ATAT -AT and the ATSTs, and they have them from different eras, and they have the speeders, and they have all the ships from Starfighter Assault, and you can change your different star cards to change the abilities of these vehicles. So I think the whole vehicle aspect is better in EA's version. I just wish that you could get in and out of them like you could in the original game. I think if they set it up that way in Capital Supremacy or something, and they just had like an open giant sandbox battle, kind of like the Battlefield games where you could get in and out of vehicles, I think that would make EA's Battlefront 2 way, way better. But I gotta give them the point here. And then the final thing I say for last, just to bring it up, is the graphics. I can't really hold anything against 2005. They did the best they could at the time versus what EA was able to do with all the advancements in technology. Like when you look at how far video games have come, I think if the same exact studio that made the 2005 Battlefront made the same Battlefront 12 years later, their graphics would be just as good and their game would look pretty similar to EA's version. So, I mean, EA obviously gets the point there because the game looks beautiful, the graphics are amazing, the sound is amazing, they nailed it, it looks and feels just like Star Wars, the maps are beautiful, the maps feel like you're playing on a Star Wars map, like Naboo is spot on, Hoth is pretty spot on. I mean, every single map looks like it was taken straight from the movies. And EA really nailed that part. And I like the design and the look of EA's version of the maps compared to the original. Like, the original maps captured the feel of it, but they were kind of small depending on the map, and a lot of them were just big open spaces. So EA obviously wins in the overall graphics and map design for their version of Battlefront 2. So those are all of the things that I thought the EA and DICE's version of Battlefront 2 did better than the original 2005 Battlefront. Like I said, I do think this game has come a long way over the course of two years. They do have that advantage of having a live service approach so they can continue to upgrade it, make the game better, tweak it, add more content, versus the original, which just had a little bit of DLC, 
which just added a couple maps and some heroes, and they didn't have anything else. It's just everything came with the game. So it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges when it comes to the updates and stuff. But that's my thoughts, that's my opinions. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. If you guys want to see everything that I said about the original Battlefront 2 in yesterday's video, be sure to check it out. And then if you guys haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. It helps me out in the algorithm and stuff. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out another video, and I will talk to you guys next time. We would be honored if you would join us. You cannot resist.